Let me first welcome Jason Van Atta from Van Atta Fabrication. Folks, put your hands together for Jason. Morning, everybody. Like she said, I'm Jason Venata. I'm Venata Fabrication. This was formerly the Sedalia Youth Center on uh, 420 West 16th. It's across from the little Hispanic grocery store there. Pretty good size. I went from, I was using our farm shop for about two and a half years until we outgrew it. It was like maybe 2,000 square foot. We have almost 6,000 here, but half of it's showroom. So there's a shop. There's about 3,000 square foot in there. Oh, this is all, we build all kinds of, we got a 69 Camaro, a Silverado, a square body, a 52 Ford, my 69. That's my daughter Gracie, she's doing some dimple dyeing and parts we make. It's my daughter Addie, she's bolting down an air compressor. That's our CNC plasma table, and basically our work area where my uh, nighttime guy, he runs the table. I don't know how to run it, but I know how to buy it and hire somebody to run it. <laughs> <clears throat> so that works really well. I'll get trained on it someday. <clears throat> Just another shot of the shop. These, they come from everywhere. That Camaro's from Kansas, the Silverado's from here, the uh, square body is from St. Louis, and that 52 Ford is from Houstonia, Sweet Springs area. It's one of the Geyer Chemical and Fertilizer guys' trucks, one of my buddies. This is the showroom. This is the fireman putting together bicycles for the uh, Pettis County Christmas for the kids. We, I'm not really using the showroom much yet, so it worked great for them to use it for a couple months. All right, here's what we do. This is how the one Ford came in. We couldn't save anything but the frame, which needed a lot of work. There's the frame, it's got holes all in it. So here it is a few months later. Everything you see in the rear, this is all hand fabricated back here. The front's a kit, <clears throat> it's modernized everything. Here we're taking three inches out of the top. There's the bed and everything basically in it. So here's another before. You see how tall the top is, it looks odd. Here it is done, three inches out. Most of what you see is new. The bed's a kit, the fenders are all fiberglass. We saved the hood, everything else is new stuff. And the front grill and whatnot, we saved that. Okay, so here's the son's truck. We're building it right now. It was the same, we saved the cab on it. The other one, we had to buy another truck to get a cab. I don't know if you all go to uh, the Starlight Theater in Branson, there's the Texas Tenors. My buddy JC is one of those. This is his truck. He brought it in and we, uh, we lowered it and straightened out the, the body was a mess. And this is one from uh, Knob Noster we redid. This one here is from Memphis, Tennessee. Came in for air suspension, that's why it's so low. Came in lowered, which isn't great. Now he can raise it and drive it and go even lower to show. This here's one I built. I started for myself and I sold it just kind of as a running, barely running shell, then finished it for the customer. This is just a C10 body. I hand built the whole frame, all the suspension, bought a 2000 Silverado, took the engine motor, the motor and transmission, all that out and put it in here. So basically everything you see that we do is all fuel injected with newer motors. You see all the hand fabricated suspension in the rear, wood bed floor. This is my dad's car I built about six years ago. That's the Camaro from Kansas. That's all the, there's your air tank, compressors, all the valves that run all the air suspension. This car, his air suspension is like mine, another one we're doing right now. Our suspension is actually all ran by a computer. We have presets. So if I'm gonna take off and drive, I'm sitting on the ground, I just hit button two. <clears throat> it takes about half a second, it lifts up to five inches of ride right height and away we go, which is pretty cool. This here is from a Lincoln. We, right now we've cut the entire side of this tractor out. We're hand fabricating it all out of sheet metal so they can open the door to ether the motor to start it before they pull, then shut the door real quick, before they're having to pull pins and everything, and it's taking too much time. We do small jobs sometimes. We just did fender flares on this, and that's about the smallest job we do. We don't do window tint or any of that stuff. Everything we do is pretty much heavy fabrication. This is uh, unique. He does a lot of cabinets in the area, Tommy. This is his truck we lifted. We did a lot of lift kits. This is a uh, Challenger we lowered last week. Okay, this here came in from Oklahoma. We have a lot of trucks come in from Oklahoma. Uh, let's see. The top picture is his engine bay before. This picture down here is what I built last week. So it came in on a Saturday and left the ne next Saturday. While these vehicles are in, I designed my kits off of it. So now we have the uh, 08 to 2013 Silverado engine bay kit. So I used his truck to design the kit, and I give him a deal for letting me do that. Now his engine bay is already, it's going, it's going straight to his painter. His painter will 
paint all that to match the truck, and then uh, it should be in a magazine here pretty soon, which would be good advertising for us. Then uh, I told my burn table guys, like, hey, make him one of our signs. I want to surprise him with it. So we made him a Green Envy sign. That'll go with the painter, too. And he can sit that in the bed or the seat or wherever. So he's pretty excited about that. So we do a lot of stuff like that. All right, here's my 69C10. This is called Guinea Pig because most of the parts we have are designed off my truck. That's our underhood panels. This is our everything you see is core support filler panel kit, inner fender kits, five piece firewall kit. This stuff sells really well. It's probably about, it's almost half of our income now is just selling these parts. These C10s are super popular. And almost everything we sell goes to Texas. They're just, there's so many C10s there. After that's Oklahoma. Then after that's just a mix of all the other states. 69 Camaro, this is a panel we make. It's got the dimple dyed holes in it. <clears throat> A lot of times we leave the holes out, but we have Camaro parts too. When I have a sale, this is usually what happens. We just end up spending days just building panels. Those are core support fillers the guys have ordered. That's a five-piece firewall kit. Okay, here's a customer picture he sent me of the kit installed on his firewall. They're pretty much a big mess before they put the kit in. This is all air conditioning and heat. We go aftermarket. It relocates it all to the inside and shrinks it down real small. Another customer installed picture. These are trophies we make for shows. These are signs we make. These are signs we make. That's Empire Customs here in town. We put LEDs behind them. That's mine. That's the end of the summer Sonic Cruise Night trophy. This is a sign we did for a bar in uh, Blue Springs. Everybody thinks our panels are stamped or not. We run them through the bead roller and they do that. This is a kit we sell. This is my rear suspension to my truck. Everything you see here is, is we sell. So there's the kit we sell. All right, that's it. Any questions? So Jason, I'll ask the first question. Okay. So you started the business out of your shop? I started a business like 13 years ago and uh, <clears throat> Went for like three years, had a long waiting list. I actually got caught up and just ran out of work. So I ended up doing construction for a while. Then ended up at Pro Energy as electrician and a fabricator. So they got me really, really good at welding and fabricating. <clears throat> that was interfering with my kids too much because the, the hours were insane. So I went back to this. And thanks to Facebook, we do 100% of our business pretty much through Facebook. That's how we are in the other states. Like we have vehicles coming from Texas, Oklahoma, Tennessee. Well, they all know about us because of Facebook. Between my Jason Venata page, my Venata Fabrication page, and my Instagram, <clears throat> about 10,300 followers. So whenever I post the pictures of, hey, this is what we got, and do my sales, it just goes out to everybody. So now with Facebook, we're really not worried about running out of business. But if we'd had Facebook back then, who knows what this would be now. I never would have had to quit, but, you know. Really dumb question, but are these vehicles freak legal? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, you're talking about like because they have the air suspension on them. If you're driving a Navigator or a Cadillac Escalade, you're on air, air suspension. All the SUVs that are high end, they're all on air. And <clears throat> they do the self leveling, like the computerized kits we put in there. Actually, I was looking more like the older trucks and everything. I know you can't make them current, they're not going <coughs> to more recent standards, but they're, they're at least drivable on, on city streets. Yeah, like that Ford, you know, it would have had a straight axle in the front, rode really bad, <clears throat> an old six-cylinder motor that got bad gas mileage and no horsepower, old drum brakes. It now has all-power disc brakes all the way around, fuel injection, over 300 horsepower, brakes over 20 miles per gallon, Just and it's on, it's on air suspension in the rear, but everything about it's upgraded. The second one we're building, it's got power windows, it's got full GPS in it, he can talk to it. It's got about every upgrade you can possibly imagine. And they all have overdrive in them too, so that's nice. You can take them out on the interstate and just cruise. Like my truck's got a six speed out of a GTO in it. So I can go 75 mile an hour down the interstate and get 20 miles per gallon. Yeah, it's the nice thing about what we do. It's called Resto Mod. We restore them, but we modify them and put everything current. That's why we, we buy wrecked like Silverados and Tahoes and pull the drivetrain out and transplant them into this, into these. Even those Fords have the Chevy 5.3s in them. And my truck has a Corvette LS1, but. They, uh, it just really modernizes everything. Which is great if you're like in California, you have smog restrictions and stuff. 
<clears throat> these vehicles will pass because they have new drivetrains in them. Jason, can you tell a little bit more about the production side of what you're doing? Like you're starting to sell the kits, but what mm -hmm. other pieces are you looking at and making that you're just sell and you just produce? And how many people do you have in forty? I have one full-time guy who gets his forty hours a week, and I have another guy at night. He works at Impact as a designer and does wraps. He runs my burn table, and then well, we train my daytime guy too. He now runs the burn table, so that's great. I got two guys, so. Um, we just want to keep, as different vehicles come into the shop, we design parts off of them. Just keep coming out with more and more kits. So there's always something to sell. We probably have around 30 parts we're selling now. So there's just every day there's something going out. So I basically want to just increase that. Yeah. As far as building more vehicles, no. We, <clears throat> it's already, you can see the shop's full. We have four in there at a time usually. And some of them, you know, those Fords took a year to build. Yeah. So some stuff's in for a few days and stuff's in for a year or longer. When they're that far gone, it takes a while and a lot of money. So it's a lot of times you just don't have like 75 grand just sitting around. Just to, it's going to take a while to get all that taken care of. Do you have like standards you have to meet on your equipment there? Is it like my equipment for building parts or the vehicles? These parts here that don't have the vehicle, then you have to have engineers no, no, it's weird. The bad thing is, <clears throat> we have vehicles come in, like a 16-year-old kid's bagged his truck in his driveway, <clears throat> and uh, it's bad. They're not safe. We have vehicles come in, we couldn't hardly get them off the trailer because they would broke apart, and it's guys doing them at home themselves. It's like you need to go to a shop, but if you're going to do air suspension on a truck or a car, you're looking at four to $7,000. These guys don't have that, but they want to hit them switches so bad, they will do whatever they can to do it themselves. And so what we do, like this here is bulletproof. This is what's in my truck, and I'm pushing almost 500 horsepower, and <clears throat> it doesn't phase it, and they ride nice. It's actually, it's, when they leave us, they're stronger than they were from the factory. Yeah, because this here beat leaf springs any day, plus it's adjustable. Yeah, you would think, there's a lot of vehicles out. I've been to shows where I'm like, this whole row of truck, I hope none of these guys drove these here. I hope they were all trailered, because <clears throat> they're not safe to be on the road. But they are, because they did them themselves. What's your plan with your showroom? We are going to, well, I had an overhead door put in two weeks ago, so we can pull vehicles up there. But we don't think they're going to clear the bathroom when you pull in. <laughs> so my dad's a construction guy. He's going to cut the bathrooms way bigger than it needs to be. And we have two of them. So he's going to cut that thing down half the size so we can pull in. Because <clears throat> my truck needs to be in there all the time. The shop gets so full, I have to take it home which isn't good, but I need to test fit parts on my truck today, which means we have to go get it and then bring it back. It's only like a mile away. But uh, put vehicles up there and all of our parts. Beans with Sedalia Youth Center, and it had all the gaming systems in there. They have outlets along all the walls. So we can hang all our signs in there and get them all plugged in with the LEDs. So it's gonna work perfect. It's all new and carpeted, so. Just basically, it'd be like a little store, really. Anybody else? No. So you went from your shop or your garage into this facility so that's a big step you kind of breeze right over that buying a building and investing that's a lot of investment that you've made yeah well, it was nerve-wracking because <clears throat> i bought the building knowing i could i couldn't use it my paperwork was wrong and we found out it was not zoned to work on cars in i had about a week before we closed i could bail out i told my realtor i was like no i'm going to do it <clears throat> like worst case scenario is i have to just resell this building which would be okay because i got a good deal on it but i'm like this is the perfect building for what I want to do. I looked at a lot of buildings. I don't like any of them. I want this building. So took my chance, went up in front of the zoning board and the city council, and they loved it and passed it. And it took about six weeks of working in the other shop while I wanted to be in this one. And, but got moved in, and everything's good to go. But yeah, it was a big investment buying it and bought a bunch more equipment. Can you go into a little more detail on what you had to do to get the rezoning? I did what I did today. We put together a slideshow. I went up in front of the zoning board and gave my spiel just like this, showed them what we do, and uh, told them, you know, I'd be hiring a couple guys, getting a couple guys jobs, which we did that. We're probably going to hire one more next year. And then uh, basically told them, you know, I'm not going to be a nuisance to the neighborhood. And they asked me, is like, is there anything, anything piled around the shop? I was like, no, and there's not. Just basically told them exactly what was going to happen. And uh, yeah, it was not that hard to do. Like I was told it would be, but yeah, pretty stressful though. 
Did you have to go around the neighborhood and ask the neighbor permission to, to get to? I had to pay hundreds of dollars to have letters sent out from the zoning department to everybody in the neighborhood. The neighborhood's kind of rough, so when they get a certified letter, <laughs> they don't open it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah Jorge, to Jorge told me that. He's like, don't worry about that. He's like, He's like, ain't nobody in that neighborhood opening a certified letter. <laughs> so, yeah, there's another reason we don't sit stuff outside unless we want to see it disappear. But anyway, well, I don't know the neighborhood. It's, it's fine for what we do. But, uh, yep. You said a lot of your business comes from Texas and Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And I assume there are fabricating businesses in those states. Oh, yeah. So what sets you apart? Why would they go so far from home to have work done? So what is it that you do or how you do it that, or is it your advertising? Is it the work you do isn't done by other people? And what, well, it's what a little draws bit of, them here? It's a little bit of everything. Part of it is nobody does the sheet metal work like we do. Like if you want to have your engine bay look like a mine, which we call like a pro touring engine bay, you take it to a shop, it's going to be thousands of dollars to have all that built into your car. They can just order our parts for like that whole kit. I think to do the whole engine bay is like twelve to fifteen hundred dollars, depending on how much of it you buy. But as far as people coming this far, they uh, have a really good reputation for the air suspension. They know it's not going to fail on them and it's going to work right. That's one of the draws. Texas, there's some big famous shops in Texas building these things. But you're looking at seven to $10,000 for air suspension. We'll all do the exact same thing for five. So they'll save a lot of money. I have guys on Facebook be like, I'll drive 15 hours to see Jason to save two or $3,000. So like the one from Oklahoma, you know, he drove, it was a 12-hour round trip for him one Saturday and the next Saturday. But he's like, nobody does what you do. He's like, I want my engine bay to look like, like mine does. So they can drive and save some money. So they haul the vehicles, they don't drive the vehicles up, right? These, because they're, they're so far. All these vehicles you see can be driven and are, but when they drive them this far, a lot of it's just, a lot of it's just like rock chips and stuff. Like that green truck, you know, there's a full guard on the front of that trailer, so the, the big jacked up truck that's towing it isn't hitting it with rocks. And like, but most of them, like my truck, I can take it on like the pro touring trips and stuff like that. They're all built to be driven. Anybody else? Uh, where did, what drives your passion for what you do? How, why did you decide to get started in this? I've loved building stuff since I was a kid. <clears throat> I've always been pretty good at it. I got a double dose of it in my genetics. <laughs> my grandpa and uncle's all on one side. They can build, they'll build their own farm equipment. <clears throat> and my dad's the same way. He can build a house, do concrete, do stuff on vehicles. He can't do what I do, which is kind of cool, but he got me started. But we've built our own farm equipment before. We need a spray coop, we'll build it instead of, you know, buying it or having somebody do all our spraying to save money. But ever since I was little, you know, I took all my little toy tractors and trucks and modified all them and <laughs> one thing turned into another. I just, one day, I wanted to build something. I had a Corvette at the time. You can't build a newer Corvette. This was 13 years ago. I was like, I'm going to buy a truck and just cut it up. And I did and it was pretty cool and it was done. That's what started the business. Yeah, the truck got me into a club, then I started building all their stuff, then I started doing everything for another club, and then it went from there, but without Facebook in this area, there's just, it just doesn't really work very well. You ever watch those shows on TV, like Counting Cars? Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of those shows I like, some I hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of it's got a lot of ridiculous stuff in it, and some of the stuff is not how we do things at all. <clears throat> yeah, they, they skip a lot of stuff. They make it look a lot easier than it is. This is the hardest job I've ever had and the most stressful. And I was a farmer and that wasn't as stressful as this is. Trying to meet deadlines and just keep everything organized. When I'm trying to run the business and four vehicles at a time and ordering parts for everything to keep all the vehicles moving and then to build the parts and then we're always designing parts. It's, it's about 13 hours a day almost every day, so it's, it's a lot. I work from eight in the morning until usually nine or 10 at night, right now at least. So how many, how many vehicles you run through a year? You know, I really don't know. It's a hard, that's a really hard question to answer because like I said, they could be there for a few days or like that Challenger and the truck we're doing today, they're there for one day because we're lowering them. But the, that 52 Ford, you know, it's been there for a year. 
Um, that Silverado has been there for a month. This is, I can't even answer that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just, they're all different. Mm -hmm. What percentage of your business are the kits that you're selling versus jobs on specific <clears throat> It changes all the time. It changes from year to year. Like last year, I came out, started coming out with parts in October. took off really well. Then in December, it just died, which I was not surprised. Everybody's saving money for Christmas presents. Then January, it was dead. We literally did no parts sales in January, and just a little bit in December. This December, we did $7,000 in sales in two weeks, not having a sale right before Christmas. And then January has just been steady, really steady. So I don't know why it does that. A lot of my customers are business owners and stuff, so Christmas presents don't phase them. They just buy parts anyway. Of course, most of these guys, they have really good jobs. A lot of them in Oklahoma and Texas work in the oil fields and stuff, so they don't. <clears throat> well, the oil guys, they worry some, but a lot of them aren't really phased by Christmas. But So that month, we made more on parts than we did on building show vehicles. But most months, I'd say it's probably 50-50 between the two. You know? But I'd like to see the parts side grow and kind of take over, because that's what I really enjoy. It's not, there's nothing stressful about it. You don't have to really worry about anything ever failing. This is just, they're all for show, except for our suspensions, but they're bulletproof, so. Any more questions? I have a last question. Does anybody else have any questions? No. So, Jason, what can we as a community do for you? Um, just really spread the word, you know. Something we can, <clears throat> in this town, building the signs for businesses and stuff would be great. That's why I want to get the store up front growing. People can come in. All those signs you all saw, like they've got a truck or a car on it, that's been a customer sending me a picture, maybe his vehicle or his dad's or his son's or his buddy's. And then I take that picture and I send it to Thomas, my designer, and uh, he turns it into whatever he has to do so that machine can cut it out and it not just fall apart. He has to do all this stuff. And uh, so we can do any kind of sign you can pretty much imagine. As far as I design the parts and Thomas helps me design, I tell him what I want and then he makes the the signs on the burn table. But we can do a lot of that around here. But yeah, just really spread the word, let people know what we do, and it's really the best thing. Other than that, everything's going pretty smooth. It's busy. Well, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you.